Hello everyone. I've done a couple videos on Mocha devices. I've done one where I talk about my TDS fiber install and how I have everything hooked up through my GoCoax devices. I've also done a video on accessing the web-based interface on the GoCoax devices, which is an optional thing and not necessary for using them. I've done a video on the Mocha devices themselves. We did do an unboxing and a setup. I also did a quick video demonstrating the file transfer speeds using the Coco Hex devices and how we get the one gigabit speeds throughout the home on the coax network. I get a lot of questions on the Go coax devices. And one of the questions that I get a lot is, why isn't it working for me? And like any electronic device or any device in general, there can be myriad reasons why something does or doesn't work. But with these Go coax devices and Mocha devices in general, there are a couple of rules to follow. And I put this video together to try and answer some of those questions that I've tried to answer in the comments on my videos, but sometimes it's just sort of difficult to get the point across. Uh, a, I don't want to insult anyone's intelligence, but B, there are some things that even if we say to check for, it just, it just might not be something that people are properly checking. So, number one, you have to have two devices. All right, I want to show everyone that I have two devices. Now, one device is hooked up and one isn't. We'll come back to the second device in a few minutes. The first device though, is hooked up to my TDS fiber and this box is hooked up to my router via an ethernet connection. So we can see that on this device, the power light is on and the LAN light is on. Now the LAN light's blinking, all right? But the LAN is connected on this device, but it's showing that there isn't a connection through the Mocha network and there's no actual LAN traffic. So the LAN port is powered. There is an ethernet cable in there and it's flashing to demonstrate that, but it's not showing any port activity because obviously it's not connected to another device. Now this device has a coaxial cable coming out of the Mocha port on it. I don't have an additional TV hooked up to it. I'm not using cable TV. I don't have spectrum or chart or anything like that. I just have the fiber connection. And on this Mocha port, we have a coaxial cable that's connected right here. So let's pretend for the sake of this video that this cable is running all through my home. It's about 25 feet of fairly, fairly inexpensive. I don't know if you can hear that. Fairly inexpensive, generic, contractor grade, coaxial cable, something you might find running through the walls of any home or apartment. All right, so let's pretend we're in another room. Here's our cable run. We want this device to talk to the computer in this room. We want to get this LAN connection working. We want all these lights up and we want the LAN connection working. The other thing that go coax devices and any Mocha device in general, really love is electricity. Now again, I'm not trying to insult anyone's intelligence, but you do have to power it up. Power on. The device right now will be booting. If we were actually hooked up with an ethernet cable to another computer on a static IP, we could actually watch the device boot up just like any router type device. But the device is currently booting itself. All right, so we've powered our second Go Coax Mocha device. The other thing we have to do when we're using this device is we're gonna want to plug a coaxial cable, all right, Pretend we're in another room and this is a drop in the wall. We want to plug that in to the Mocha 
port on this device. And as we can currently see, this device is saying, I have an active Mocha connection with another device. So number one, two devices. Number two, power. Number three, we have to have an actual coaxial cable that actually leads eventually all the way back to the other device. Be it going through another splitter, be it that it's joined somewhere in between, we have to have, we have to be able to draw a straight line one way or the other to the other Mocha device. Now this might be how we're set up. It might be this easy in your residence or your apartment or wherever you're at. It may be that you've essentially got a straight line connection, one room to another, and you've got a Mocha connection and you've got power and then you've got another ethernet cable going to your let's say desktop or laptop in the adjacent room or across the home or wherever you are and now we have local area network activity all right things are talking we're working this is what you want to see if you don't see this, there's an issue somewhere. But this is the simplest connection. This is two Go coax devices, or two Mocha devices in general, connected directly with a coax cable, and then an ethernet line to the computer in the room. Simplest connection. But it's not usually like that. As I discussed in another one of my videos, what happens is in a lot of homes, and in apartments and other structures, you have many coaxial cables going to many rooms, and they usually branch out from a central distribution node. Now, that central distribution node could be a ginormous splitter, somewhere in a drop ceiling, somewhere in a wall, somewhere in a utility room. It could be something simple. It could just be a smaller one, maybe just a split. Maybe it's just a, a one or two bedroom apartment and this is all you've got. And you've got in and you've got out to each room. Maybe the lines themselves have been extended with a splitter. You know, so there's ways to split coaxial cable. Coaxial cable can be extended with something like this. And this won't cause interference. This will generally extend the lines. This will let you put two coaxial cables right next to each other, and it won't create any interference. These types of splitters, though, are sometimes used to bridge lines. And they're not all Mocha compatible. So we've gone over these three. You might have another one. This one's slightly newer than the first three, but we're going to get to them all in due time. And then we have what's highly recommended by the companies that make the Mocha devices, which is to get a Mocha approved compatible splitter, assuming you need a splitter, but get a Mocha splitter. And these Mocha splitters generally are working on a frequency of up to at least 1600 megahertz. Now, when we compare this splitter, that does state that it's Mocha compatible, and it goes from five, and this one is five to 1675. All right. We have some of these other ones. This one is five to 1000. This little guy is five to 1000. This one's up to a gig. This one also is up to a gig. This one's also five to a thousand. So, well, what if my current splitter works? Well, the only way to know if the splitter works is to actually test it and to put another coaxial cable in the way in the system. So, Let's assume 
that this line doesn't go directly to the drop in our room here. This line actually feeds into a splitter. Let's say that this line feeds into a splitter. Now what we want to do is take the signal that this line's carrying and we want to carry it into our go coax device in another room. So we have another coaxial cable. And this cable plugged into the splitter, we're going to plug into our go coax device. Now again, this splitter is 5 to 1000 megahertz. It's not branded as Mocha compatible. All right. No Mocha connection. We've disconnected, but we're going to connect it to the Mocha port. This splitter is not Mocha capable. Sometimes they'll work intermittently, but unless that's a steady light, that's not a solid Mocha connection. It's nothing I would want to rely on. So, okay, let's say we wanted to try a different splitter. That one's not compatible. So this big guy isn't a good fit. We've hooked up our Mocha device and we have no idea why it's not working. Well, probably the splitter. So let's try another one. We'll put our signal in on this little guy. And then out. Putting our signal in, we're going out to our Mocha device. And let's see if this works. This one appears to work. We have a Mocha connection and a LAN connection. We have LAN traffic. And again, we have the Mocha traffic. So this one does work. Will it be a steady, reliable signal? Possibly. There's no way to know. Time will tell. But even though it had the same specs as this one, all right, this one wasn't compatible. Let's try a different one. We'll try this old crusty looking one. So we're gonna come in. And then we're gonna go out. In and out the splitter. Let's throw that on our go coax device. All right, this little guy is not giving us any signal. So that's two out of three, I would say fairly random splitters that I had around my home of over the years uh, that are not compatible with the Mocha devices. So two out of three that aren't compatible. Well, let's try a different one. We will try this newer looking one. Oh, while I'm connecting this, another question that comes up is do I need to terminate the splitter? Do I need to put terminators in the unused portion of the splitter? I've never done it. I don't think it's required. If you want to do it, fine. I don't think we're going to get any signal leakage or anything out of there. 
So let's see if this one's compatible. This one appears to be compatible. Will it stay compatible? Will we get signal drops? No way to know, but it is currently firing. So that's two out of four that are compatible and two out of four that are incompatible. And then we'll do a last but not least test and demonstration of our actual Mocha splitter. This one I picked up on Amazon when I first put together my Mocha network. I'll have a link to it. I'm not affiliated with the manufacturer or anything. This isn't an advertisement, but I'll put a link to it in the video. This splitter has been rock solid for me since I first hooked up my Mocha network. And the thing about the Mocha networks is they just work. They generally just work. You don't need to get into the web-based interfaces of them to get them to work. You plug them in. If there's power and there's a, a direct connection one way or the other between one device and the other, and your computers are hooked up to the Go Coax devices with Ethernet cables on the LAN ports, they're going to work. And our final test is we have Mocha and we have LAN activity. And this is with the Holland device that I have. So why else would a Mocha connection or a Mocha network not work? I don't know. Like anything else, there's probably a ton of possibilities about why something does or doesn't work. Uh, it's hard to say, but I wanted to run through some quick scenarios. I wanted to run through some demonstrations of some splitters that do and don't work. And just remind folks, you do have to have power. You always have to have the power. And you always have to have the LAN hooked up. And again, the coaxial line, that coaxial cable, you have to be able to eventually draw a line from one device to another, and you have to have two devices. Can they be different manufacturers or different Mocha specifications? This is a 2.5 specification. Yes, they are backwards compatible. It will just affect the overall speed of the connection. I hope this was helpful. Um, please, um, if you like what I'm doing here, uh, smash the like button. Uh, leave any comments you may have, any questions, any experiences any of you may have had using the GoCoax devices on your home network, anything that might help us.